Hello and welcome again to RC Model Reviews and today I'm talking about FPV glasses, goggles, whatever you want to call them. I'm talking about them because in the mail today arrived this. This is the, hold on, where's the book? Let me have a look. It's the Sky Zone FPV glasses. Now these were kindly sent by um, Foxtech. So I've got to acknowledge that so you know that I may be biased, but you know I'm not. Um, yeah, sent by Foxtech for review. The Sky Zone. Now, I'd, been, I'd looked at these on the net and I thought, hey, that's actually quite a clever idea because what these have is a little camera in the front. I don't know if you can see that. A little camera in the front there so that when you've got your goggles on, you can press a button and you can actually see what the camera sees. Now, anyone who's flown FPV knows that once you put your goggles on, it can be quite disorienting to try and find stuff on the ground because, you know, you can't see. And if you put your goggles up on your forehead, then sometimes when you pull them down, they've all fogged up because you've been, you know, nice warm day, your forehead's been sweating. And so then you go to put them on, they're all foggy. So it's really nice if you can have them in position and use this little camera, not, not, not so you can fly your model because the field of view is too wide, you probably never see the model in the air, but so you can find stuff on the ground, pick the model up, pick your transmitter up, things that can be quite a bit of a challenge if you've just got regular video glasses on. So I'm gonna be really keen to see how that works. I don't know if it'll work or not, it depends on the quality of the camera. Now, the construction of these things, they're quite solid. I mean, I'm comparing, to give you an idea, what I'm comparing against is the original Fat Sharks. Now I got these, these are bloody marvellous, to be honest. The base edition original Fat Sharks, widest field of view of any of the glasses that I have, and that's why I use them so much. There's no built-in receiver, there's no head tracking, there's no fancy bits, it's got IPD adjustment, so it matches the width of your eyes if you want to set it up. Um, you can put diopters in there, but my eyes, although I wear glasses, my eyes actually work really well with the Fat Sharks. These have got their downsides, they've got disadvantages, they've got a foam foam plastic strip around here which constantly frays and falls off and things, but you can buy replacements, they're cheap as beans. And I just love them, these just work so well. Now, the edge of the, because there's such a wide field of view, around the edges of the peripheral vision, you get sort of rainbowy effects, because it's only plastic lenses. lenses. So they're not um, uh, achromatic, which means that they, they bend light of different colors at different angles. So you get rainbows around the edge, and it can make OSD quite hard to read, but you know, I prefer flying bareback anyway, so my OSD has a minimum of information, and this is just such an immersive experience because your entire field of view is almost is filled with the picture from the camera. So it's really like you're sitting in a plane rather than looking at a TV screen on a black wall. So I rate these very highly, even though you know they are the very first ones that Fat Shark made, and they're not without their problems. And they're black, and they get hot in the sun. Mm, not a good thing. Anyway, I also have the Fat Shark Dominators, which are very popular now. These, I've got the little Team Black Sheep uh, receiver that works with the Foxtech Skywave, you know, the, uh, not the non, uh, uh, what is it, the non-immersion RC 5.8 gear. That's really brilliant, I love it. Put a clove leaf on here and away you go with your cheap FPV backpack or your whatever transmitter. Excellent, works really well because the original um, Fat Shark receivers were pretty insensitive. You didn't get much range, you could get more range out of a um, Skywave 200 milliwatt, like in the backpack I make, you get more range out of that than you could out of the 600 milliwatt Fat Shark because the Fat Shark receivers were so insensitive. They've fixed that now apparently. The new Fat Shark receivers are apparently very sensitive, so you get excellent range. I don't have one, and so I can't verify that, but there you go. Now, <clears throat> these are a change from the old Fat Sharks because, as I say, the old Fat Sharks have the sort of foam rubber surround. These have got rubber eye cups, and <clears throat> that is, <laughs> I don't know, I can never get them to seat properly. They're always sort of pushing, I've got old eyes with fat around them, and they're always pushing sort of stuff into my field of view, so it's hard to get comfortable with these on. Um, one thing that people notice when they put them on is, wow, what a sharp picture. But that's because the field of view is quite narrow, so all the pixels are closer together, it's all compressed. So, you, but it does look sharper, but the downside is that it's not immersive. You've got this, this TV screen out in the middle of blackness, so it's not quite as good as these and well, these are better in terms of the experience. These are better technically, I suppose. Um, these do not have IPD either, which is a bit of a pain. If you're one of the criminal types with your eyes close together, then these may not work for you because these are fixed spacing and everybody's eyes are different widths. So I'm lucky enough they work with my eyes. I don't have the overlapping images. It all looks very fine. But the only time I use these is when I really need to have the built-in receiver so I don't have to have my pole and a whole lot of wires. So for, you know, sort of flying on the road, if I'm throwing something in the back of the car or the back of the truck and I want to stop somewhere and do FPV, these are great because I don't have to take my pole and get it out. 
Now, of course, the other one is these fat sharks here, the attitudes, I think they are. Now, I like, I like the shape. I like, these are small. Compared to the dominators, these are quite a much smaller and rounded and sleeker. And um, they have a slightly bigger field of view, apparently. I've, I haven't actually used these. They've got the built-in um, fat shark immersion RC receiver, which I won't use because this is with the older one, it's not so sensitive. So, but they do have AV input and all the other stuff, so I can use it with my pole. The cups are much improved because on the dominators, the cups keep falling off. Ah, you put them on and it just, just clips around the edge and sometimes it just peels off, especially if it's a hot day and you've got a bit of sweat in there. Ooh. Yeah, so there you go. The, these are a much physically and design-wise, ergonomically, these are a much better set of glasses, but these are still relatively narrow field of view. They've got IPD, so you can sit them to suit your eyes. Narrow, narrower field of view, but they're lighter, they're smaller. You know, uh, I think I'd go for these rather than the dominators any day, though. These have got built-in head trackers, which is quite handy. Uh, I don't think this one has head tracking built into it. Oh, it's got the plug, so you can get head tracking, but I don't have it. So that brings us to the Sky One, Sky Zone, Sky Zone, okay? Now, it's size-wise, it's pretty similar to the dominators. There's not a lot of difference here. Um, let's put them up side by side so you can see, all right? This is the Sky this is the Dominators, this is the Sky Zone. There's not a lot of difference there. They're pretty similar. I'll get out of the way so maybe you can see. Um, they both use rubber cups. I've yet to see what the cups are like on the Sky Zone, where they look very similar. So I have a feeling they may suffer from the same problems. I do not know. We'll find out when I try them out. What the Sky Zone has is diversity. It's got two antenna connectors and it comes with a couple of those three decibel whips, you know, useless damn things. Linear, oops, see if I can find them. Here they are in the box. Comes with these things, you know. I mean, no serious FPV uses these with 5.8 because you get all sorts of reflections and things. But you could if you wanted to. It comes with them. But throw them away. Get yourself a skew planer or cloverleaf on here and a helical on here, and then you're good to go. But to be honest, um, I'm not a great fan of putting directional antennas on your head because it's very easy when you're FPV flying to make small movements and suddenly you don't know which way you're facing. Of course, you, with these, I suppose, you can just push the button, you can see through the camera, so you know, oh, I've moved. So you can point your head back. But um, I like to set my directional antennas up before to, beforehand, pointing in one direction, so I know where, they, where it is. So I'm less likely to move my head and lose the picture. But if you want to do, you know, flying like that, and also if you're going long distance where you need a helical, you really want the elevation. Get it up above the ground, out of the clutter. You get much better range, so, but hey, it's there. You don't have to use the diversity. You could just use an ordinary cloverleaf or skew planer on here. And it's just like the Dominators. Piece of cake. The other receiver just won't kick in. So there we go. It's, uh, these are also WVGA. Now, I haven't tried them yet. I'm going to give them a try. But WVGA is interesting. You know when you have your TV and it's got... The old TVs were pretty much square. They were four across and you know, four units across, three units down. So an aspect ratio of four to three. And your new TV, your big HD LCD TV in the living room, that is 16 units across, nine units down. So it's stretched out sideways. That's the new standard. Well, these have LCDs that are the new standard. They're 16 by nine. And WVGA with more pixels in the horizontal plane. So what does that mean? Well, it means that if you're using a regular you know, board camera, like the Sony 600 or 700 TV line camera, then you're gonna get your image stretched out a bit because it's gonna turn a 4.3 image into a 16.9 image. And to do that, it's gonna stretch it horizontally. Now that may, you may think, ooh, that's gonna make it hard, but no, no. I've flown using 16.9 LCD screens. You really, you don't notice it after a while. It becomes very, very simple. And who knows, the extra resolution should be quite useful. Now, I, I gather these have also got glass optics. The lens is the glass, which means they're probably, probably gonna be less inclined to produce that color fringing. I don't know what the field of view is. It says in the instructions here, comes with a book, see? It says in the instructions, 120 degrees diagonal. Really? Oh, I don't think so. That sounds, 120 degrees is huge. But uh, I'll try them out and we'll see. Because I think the original Fat Sharks, the ones that I like so much, it's about 42 degrees or something. So three times? Yeah, you're kidding me, mate. Um, I think it's probably, someone, someone else mentioned 30 degrees or something, which puts them in a class similar to the Dominator's um, or maybe these ones here, the, the attitudes. So we'll try it out and see. Now, it's got a built-in head tracking with compass and the, the receivers in here, you'll, you'll be pleased to know. Uh, normally, you've got to make a choice. You've got the Immersion Fat Shark Standard for 5.8 or you've got the Team, the, the, you know, the, what is it, the Fox Tech Skywave Standard. It's two different bands or the, different frequencies within the band. So that's made it quite difficult. The Immersion gear is not compatible with the Skywave gear and vice versa. This has got the new multi-band receivers in it. So you can tune into either immersion transmitters, fat shark transmitters, 
or the Skyway Foxtech transmitters. Brilliant! Now, Foxtech did send me one of those receivers a while ago, and I've actually been testing it out, and it actually works really well. Oh, it reaches over here, unplugs it. That's this thing here, see? That's a 32 channels, I think they call it. Yeah, 32 channels, and it does both bands, and these receivers actually work really well. So that's what's in here. Obviously, they must have broken it and squashed it to get it in there, but it's in there. And there's two of them in there, so that's brilliant. Um, I like these receivers a lot, and I'll be doing a video on those showing you how good they are. So yeah, that makes this really, really useful with either Fat Shark transmitters or the other type of transmitters. In fact, there's no 5.8 gig uh, video transmitters, I think, that this won't work with. So that's gotta be good. Compatibility, big plus for compatibility. Um, it's got shiny buttons. This could be worth something, a little chrome. But again, my biggest complaint, my biggest complaint of all these FPV glasses is, why are they black? I mean, you sit out there in the sun, they get hot. It makes no sense. The best FPV days are the days with brilliantly fine weather. And the sun's beating down, and these are getting hotter and hotter and hotter. And as we all know, the hotter stuff gets when it's got electronics in it, the more likely it is to fail. So, oh, come on, Foxtech, get them to make some white ones. That'd be cool, they'd be different. Something different, because I mean, if you look at these on the bench here, you can't tell them apart really with a quick, quick glance. They all look so much the same. If you had a white pair, well, that would look different, wouldn't it? Or pink, or yellow, or green, or something. And just, you know, get, think outside the square. So there we go. That's my first impressions of the Sky Zone. Um, very favourable, very favourable indeed. So I will now. We've got a crappy week coming up, but as soon as the weather clears, I will go and do a whole lot of FPV. I'll try all these glasses out. What I'm also going to do is try and set up a little jig so you can see what it would be like to see that, and I'll overlap the different sizes of virtual screens you get. So you get an idea of how big the image is out of each of these, because I get a lot of people calling me up saying, what video glasses should I buy? And I have to say to them, well, whatever suits you the best, because I get a steady stream of people coming out here, because the only way I say to, to, to determine that is to try them. And I've got all these here, so I say, come, I've got all these, come and try them, see which one you like the best. Some people like the wide field of view. With, despite the fact that it makes it a bit more pixelated and you get the colour fringes, other people like the narrow field of view because it's super sharp and uh, the OSD is easy to read around the edge. And then other people just like something in between. So now I can show them the whole lot. I'll try and show you the differences by overlaying the screen sizes and you can compare that, that um, WVGA to VGA to whatever because um, it's very important. And I'll try and give you a fairly objective perspective on what I like about these when I'm using them and what I don't, because there's bound to be stuff I don't like. But I have to say thank you to Foxtech for sending these. Um, I was almost gonna buy a pair actually, so that was great, <laughs> saved me. Because they're not cheap, no, no FPV glasses are cheap, let's face it, they're all expensive, it's the most expensive part of FPV, so you have gotta make sure you make the right choice. So I'm gonna do my best to help you by doing the comparisons and giving you the inside oil, inside oil on these Sky Zone um, FPV glasses, which on paper, they look brilliant. What are they like in the air? Well, you just have to stay tuned for part two. And yes, there'll be a part two. Don't you go grizzling at me about that. <laughs> in the meantime, if you've got questions, as usual, put them on the bottom of the video. If you've got comments, put them on the bottom of the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up so other people will find it. And stay tuned because it's summer here in the Southern Hemisphere, so FPV, I'll be doing a lot. If I can find somewhere. Don't mind. Bye for now.